Well, good morning. Welcome to worship at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. You know, it's cold out there. I'm recording this on Saturday morning. It's about 10 degrees out here. You can see probably on my truck there's all kinds of icicles and everything on it. But as we watch the weather forecast uh, for this weekend, the more time passed as we got closer to Sunday, it became clear that there was a pretty good chance that some of this snow that's coming was going to come in um, by Sunday morning, possibly interfering with worship. So we made the call to go ahead and do worship online only this weekend, and I'm so glad that you're joining us. Um, settle in, get warm. As it happened, Leanne was already planning to take the weekend off, so we have all of our music already recorded, which is terrific. Uh, we've got everything for you. We're going to do the whole worship service, um, but Cameron's going to work his magic and edit it all together, and we'll do everything online. So settle in, um, and let's come before the Lord to receive everything that he has for us in worship. Well, again, welcome to worship. A couple of things to remember. Of course, there's nobody in the sanctuary, so we don't have to worry about masks or any of that business. Our worship today is Divine Service Setting 4, and uh, we'll have everything on the screen here, but you can also download a copy of the bulletin. You'll see it right down there in the comments underneath the, uh, underneath the video. So you might want to grab a copy of the bulletin. Maybe hit pause right now, grab that so that you've got it on hand while we go through everything. It should be familiar to you. Divine Service Setting 4 is pretty pretty common. Um, one of the things, if you have a bulletin or if you have a hymnal at home and you'd like to follow along with us, you'll find it on page 213 of the Lutheran Service Book. Um, for now, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the opening anthem, This is Beautiful Savior, performed by our adult choir. Ooh. 
We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we speak the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn now to our readings. Our Old Testament reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. This is Elijah being taken up into heaven and Elisha taking on his role as prophet. Now, there are actually two Old Testament readings that are prescribed in our lectionary. The other one that we did not do is from the end of Exodus, chapter 34, as Moses himself goes up on a high mountain, Mount Nebo, and is... Um, and dies, actually, is what happens. But um, interesting that we have those two accounts in the Old Testament of Elijah and of Moses and the ends of their lives as we come to the gospel reading today of Jesus and his transfiguration on the mountain with James and Peter and John right there with him. And guess who shows up? Moses and Elijah. It is an affirmation, I guess, and a reminder that the Old Testament prophets and the law represented by uh, the prophets by Elijah and the law by Moses have been fulfilled and that Jesus Christ is the pinnacle of all of it. So that's our Old Testament reading about Elijah and Elisha. Our New Testament reading, the epistle reading, is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It's a reminder from Paul, you know, we have this great hope um, much, much greater than we had from the apostles or from the, from the uh, prophets and from the law that came before. Um, and the reminder that everything is about Jesus Christ. Um, the, let light shine out of darkness, God said, and it has given us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in Jesus Christ. So that's our epistle reading. And as I mentioned before, our gospel then is the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. So we turn first to the Old Testament reading. This is from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha, and they said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. And Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. 
But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit upon me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, and chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. St. Paul writes, Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard the word of God now, we profess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'll invite now all of the younger members of the congregation to gather around uh, because Cameron has a children's message for us. Good morning. 
I hope you all are having a warm day. I'm filming this a couple days early and, and the forecast is looking a mite cold, but I pray that you are safe and that you are warm. As I was looking through the gospel lesson today, I, I, I got this idea in my head. And so stick with me here for a little bit. In the car world, there's, a, there's an expression that goes, take a peek under the hood. Now, maybe some of you know knows what this means, and, and maybe some of you need a little help. And I'm not much of a mechanic myself, but I, I, love, I love the videos where these, these unassuming cars, right? The cars that don't look so great, they're a little run down, right? They're maybe 20 years old on the outside. Notice I said on the outside, because once you peek under the hood, there's just this monster of an engine, right? With turbos or superchargers or whatever, just beefy, beefy. Because that's the whole point of, of taking a peek under the hood, right? Is you want to see where the power comes from. You want to see that engine. And in our, our gospel lesson today, Peter, James, and John, they... They got a peek under the hood of, of Jesus, so to speak. L let me explain. We know that Jesus is 100% human, right? When he was here on earth, 100% human. He was born of a human mother. He ate food. He, he drank water. He slept. Ultimately, he died. Those are things that humans do. Those are not things that God does. But at the same time, Jesus is also 100% God, which is mathematically confusing, but he's God, right? And God does things that we don't understand. And our, our gospel lesson today is, is one of those lessons that helps us to know that Jesus, while being man, is also God. Listen closely. So Jesus took with him Peter James and John and led them up to a high mountain and they were by themselves and he was transfigured before them transfigured is, is a big church word right? he was changed before them and his clothes became radiant intensely white as no one on earth could bleach them and there appeared to them Elijah with Moses and they were talking with Jesus and then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone, anyone with them except Jesus. Man, this is a really cool lesson. So the, the lesson says that Jesus' clothes became radiant. And radiant means sending out light, shining or glowing brightly. And while he is radiant, as he is glowing, two Old Testament figures, Moses and Elijah, are there with him. They had long since died. But they are there speaking with Jesus, talking with him. And then this voice comes out. This, this voice from this cloud that booms out and says, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Man. So there we have it. The disciples got their peak under the hood of Jesus, and, and, and in a way, so do we. Right? We see that Jesus is, is more than just a man. He is also God Almighty, who came to earth to take away our sins and to pay the price for them so that we may have forgiveness and new life. This is excellent news. This is great news. This is good news. So now what? We have all the information. And it's good information. I'm glad that we have it. But, but what's the next step then? What, where, do we, where do we go from here? Well, thankfully, our, our lesson gave us the answer. Remember that voice that, that boomed out from the cloud? the one which would be God the Father speaking, who said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Listen to him. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I, 
I don't see it. I don't see Jesus. How do I listen to Jesus these days? I mean, it's been a while since anyone's seen him. Oh. This is probably the answer, isn't it? The Bible, which we also call God's word. Jesus' word. It's right here. This is how we listen to Jesus. This is what what we should look to when we want to know what to do. This is how we follow him. So let us let us do that. Let's try our best to follow what Jesus has told us to do and to listen to him as God commanded us to do. Let's say a quick prayer asking for God's help in this. And I want you guys to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for saving us and for loving us and for giving us your word so that we can follow you. Help us to follow you in everything we do. Amen. We continue now with the hymn of the day. This is number 413, O Wondrous Type, O Vision Fair. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our assembled hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, our gospel reading today relates the quintessential mountaintop experience. I mean, it is quite literally where we get the term. But of course, nowadays, a mountaintop experience may or may not refer to something like what Peter, James, and John experienced. We tend to think of mountaintop experiences as personal events, and we generally place ourselves at the center of that experience. I mean, nowadays, mountaintop experiences are about rest at the end of a struggle, about working hard to reach the summit, getting to the top, and shedding your pack as you take in a breathtaking view from on high, about the relief of finally attaining to some new peak, about 
the peace of putting the hard work behind you, the joy of taking in or perceiving something special about yourself. And sometimes we might describe it as a close encounter with God, but have you ever noticed that most of the things that people describe as mountaintop experiences seem to place the person telling the story at the center with God in kind of a supporting role? (laughs) Our sinful nature is always nudging us to see ourselves at the center. It's a subtle form of idolatry, the the same one that leads you to put bumper stickers on your car that says, God is my co-pilot. Scripture's full of mountaintop experiences, though. Mount Moses and the burning bush at Horeb, the mountain of God. Or when Abraham went up to the land of Moriah when he was called to offer up Isaac as a sacrifice, the mountain where God himself provided the ram for the sacrifice. Aaron died on top of a mountain. Moses died on the top of Mount Dembo. Even the temple at Jerusalem was constructed on the top of a mountain. God, it would seem, is fond of revealing himself through mountaintop experiences. Here's one. Moses' experience when he received the Ten Commandments that had all the hallmarks of a real mountaintop experience. There was an encounter with God. There was a, a sense of encouragement, guidance and direction by God himself, and a confirmation of his path and his faith. It was a lot like that for Peter, James, and John. I mean, they certainly had an encounter with God as the bright cloud overshadowed them. They felt a sense of encouragement. They were given guidance and direction by God himself. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And their path and their faith was definitely confirmed. They had the prophetic word more fully realized, as Peter would put it when telling the story later. It was a mountaintop experience for them. And we can learn a lot from it. Peter, as is so often the case, was a terrific stand-in for each of us. I mean, he's so excited, so exuberant that he just can't keep his mouth shut. This astonishing event unfolds right in front of him. Jesus is transfigured, metamorphosized in front of him. His face shining like the sun and his clothes this dazzling, brilliant white. And if that wasn't enough, Moses and Elijah appear talking with Jesus. I mean, Peter's amazed. And he blurts out, Rabbi, it's good that we're here. He can't even make sense of what he's seeing. I mean, his words seem ridiculous. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. As if all three of them were of equal importance. As if Jesus merely rounded out a trinity comprising great historical figures. As if Jesus were just another great teacher or lawgiver or prophet and not the fulfillment of all that had come before. But Peter can't even take a moment to stop and consider what he's saying. His mouth, as usual, runs away ahead of his brain. And this Peter, who only six days earlier had declared correctly and with certainty that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, this Peter now gets everything all muddled up again, apparently desiring to just stay on the mountaintop with Moses and Elijah and Jesus. I mean, really, three tenths? What was he thinking? Maybe we shouldn't be too hard on Peter. I mean, we do the same thing. We take little God moments and we misunderstand them. We try to place ourselves at the center of the story and to interpret things from our own perspective. We find ourselves on a mountaintop and we get so overwhelmed with the fact that God is doing something that we may completely miss what it is that God's up to. Now, Peter had the benefit of instant correction as a cloud overshadowed them and God's voice spoke from the cloud and he cut Peter off almost in mid-sentence. It's like God was saying to Peter, wait, wait, (laughs) don't miss the point here. Now is not the time to speak. Now's not the time to take action. You need to simply know that this is my son. And you need to shut up and listen to him. Just be quiet. And pastors don't often tell you that. We stand up here in the pulpit or at the front of the sanctuary and or we sit at home or wherever we do it, but we spend a lot of time and energy to try and encourage you to talk about Jesus, 
to share what you know to be true, to live out the Great Commission and to walk out of those doors back there and get to work sharing the gospel with a world that desperately needs to know who Jesus is. And there's a time and a place for that. I mean, the Bible does the same thing. Jesus' own words encourage us to share with others. But not today. Today, God is telling us to do something different. To be quiet. To recognize Jesus for who he truly is and to listen to what he has to say. You've heard that old saying, haven't you? God gave you two ears and one mouth with the expectation that you would spend twice as much time listening as you do talking. (laughs) But we're not really wired that way, are we? Psychologists tell us that we prefer to speak and that even when we are listening, most of the time we're listening in order to formulate a response. See, our bias is toward talking. But God shuts that down today. He reminds us that if we are to be disciples of Christ, If we're to be followers of Jesus, then we first need to focus our attention on him. To set ourselves aside and to listen to what Christ has to say. To really listen. To be intentional about studying his word. And to do so with the goal of really understanding him. See, too many of us have an arm's length relationship with Jesus. I mean, we know a little bit. We get the gist of the gospel story. Jesus is God's son. He came to earth as a man born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life and he suffered and he died and he rose again in order to save us from our sins. And we figure, well, that's enough. And we sort of kind of share this story with other people. We hem and haw when we can't answer questions about what all that really means. We don't really comprehend what it means to be sinful or what it means that Jesus saved us. But it seems pretty good, so we'll stick with that. See, we call ourselves followers of Christ even as we limit our time with him to an hour on Sunday. We partition our lives so that there's church and the rest of the week. We dutifully trek up the mountain each weekend to see what Jesus has to say to us, and we we halfway hear it, and then we trek back down the mountain and we go back to our regular lives. But brothers and sisters, that's not what Christ wanted for you when he claimed you in baptism. If anyone would come after me, he says, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Make no mistake, what Jesus demands of us is hard. None of us finds it easy to deny ourselves. We don't want to set aside our old Adam because we're comfortable in that skin. We don't really want to repent of our sins, to turn away from them because we like our sins. We sin daily because it feels good. But if we really pay attention to Scripture, if we really listen to the Word of God, then we come to understand just how serious this sin problem is. We recognize that our sins separate us from God. That our addiction to sin leads to nothing but death and eternal condemnation. And trust me, when you grasp how serious that problem is, it's devastating. But Jesus invites each of you to have, well, not so much a mountaintop experience as a tabletop experience. To encounter the Word of God, capital W, in the pages of Holy Scripture to spend time in the Bible, serious, devotional, focused time, to meet the very Son of God in those pages and to really intentionally listen to what he has to say. Not to hear what we want to hear, not to simply formulate a response or to focus attention on ourselves, but to set ourselves aside. In fact, to deny ourselves and to seek to understand Jesus first. And when we do that, we enter into a deeper relationship with Christ. And make no mistake, it's terrifying at first. I mean, when you realize the real consequences of sin, you grasp the meaning of the verse, the wages of sin is death. When you comprehend just how serious this is, it can and it should frighten you. It's not comfortable. It's not pretty. 
and you may well fall on your face and be terrified. But that's also the moment when Christ will come and touch you and say, rise and have no fear. When the word of God will become life and light and everything else will be stripped away. Because in that moment, you will lift up your eyes and you will no longer see anyone with you but Jesus only. See, that's the real mountaintop experience or in Bible study, the real tabletop experience. When everything else falls to the wayside and all that remains is Jesus. Because he's what matters. He is your salvation. He's the light that shines in the darkness. He's everything that's good. He's love He's the firstborn from the dead. He's the center of our life. He's the founder and perfecter of our faith. He's the beloved son of God in whom God is well pleased. And when we get that, when we recognize who Jesus is, when we really listen to him, when we allow him to change us, then we're really his disciples. We'll seek to align our lives to his We desire to love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind and with all our strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we understand what Jesus meant when he said that we should love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That people would be so astonished at how we treat one another that they could draw no other conclusion and that we are his followers. And that's my encouragement today. Listen to Jesus. Deny yourself. Take up your Bible. See what it looks like to be a follower of Christ. Be an encourager. Help others to listen to Jesus as well. Come together in Bible study, even if it means that we do it by Zoom. Come together around God's word. And let's all be intentional about striving to love one another as Jesus first loved us. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our saving faith. Amen. We turn now to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, you revealed your glory in the transfiguration of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who tabernacled among us in the flesh. Open our eyes of of faith that we would see him continuing to tabernacle among us here in the divine service and that we would heed your admonition to listen to him as he forgives and preserves us at the font, pulpit, and altar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah at our Lord's glorious transfiguration, you reveal to us that all the law and the prophets are fulfilled in him. Send your blessing upon all pastors and servants of your church, that all their preaching and teaching would flow from the right understanding that all Holy Scripture testifies of Christ and all that he has done and continues to do for our eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, from whom every fatherhood under heaven is named, Support and bless every Christian home, that husbands and wives would be devoted to one another, and parents would pass on the faith to their children by word and deed. We thank you for the gift of life, and we celebrate with joy the birth of Bernard, a son born to Leah and Dave on Wednesday. Be present to protect him as he grows, Lord God, as he was born early and is being cared for in the NICU. Be with all pregnant mothers and those with infant children, especially Rachel and Katie. We celebrate also with all those who have birthdays this week, Megan, Debbie, Bruce, Margot, and Riley. And we thank you for the gift of marriage as we celebrate anniversaries along with Melvin and Rebecca, John and Amilda, and Fred and Shirley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority on earth. Bless those entrusted with this responsibility both here and abroad, that they would serve with integrity and honor and for the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we give you thanks and praise that John and Kathy's son David is recovering well from his surgery. Place your healing hands on all who are recovering from surgery, 
including Rodney, Christian, and Gloria. Comfort those who grieve, especially the family and friends of Lana's father, Sonny, who died on February 11th in Minnesota, and the family and friends of Retha's uncle, Dean, who died February 8th in Washington. Remind them of the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, graciously comfort and strengthen those who are sick, hospitalized, or enduring ongoing treatment. We pray especially for Pastor John, Leona, Nancy, and others, that they would know your peace and receive healing and relief according to your gracious will. We lift up all who are dealing with COVID, including Johnny, Susan, Emily, Alex, and others, and we pray for your strength for those who are on the front lines caring for the sick. Grant healing and strength to those suffering from cancer, including Randy, Charlie, Ron, Dolores, and others. Be with those who are lonely, depressed, or mentally ill. Surround them with those who know your redeeming love and will mercifully care for them. Grant steadfastness to those near death. Comfort those who grieve with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Powerful Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters at Christ Lutheran Church in Siloam Springs and for the pastors who are serving them during their vacancy. We lift up our music ministry here at Holy Trinity and we thank you for the unique talents that you have granted to so many in our midst. Lead us all to make a joyful noise to your glory in all our worship and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on the Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end, that we may die a blessed death, believing in your beloved Son, with whom you are well pleased. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude this portion of our worship with hymn 578. This is Thy Strong Word. Before we do, just a couple of announcements to relate to you. Um, the biggest one is we're watching the weather for Wednesday because that would be our first Lenten service midweek. Uh, that's Ash Wednesday. Um, from what I'm seeing right now, I don't think we're going to be able to meet in person. Uh, so we're already making arrangements to do online only worship for Ash Wednesday. But that's not for sure. Um, we are planning, if we're able to do it in person, to do it at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Um, so just keep an eye on your email, watch your text messages, watch our Facebook page, um, and we will get the word out once we figure out what the weather is doing and what we're able to do safely. So we'll encourage you to stay home, stay warm, stay safe, um, and we'll make the call on that uh, when we've got a little bit more clarity about the weather. So we conclude now with hymn 578, Thy Strong Word.
Hey, thanks for being with us. Thanks for worshiping. A little bit different, but kind of neat that we're able to pivot and do this uh, kind of on a moment's notice. Thank you so much to Cameron uh, for all the work that he did to pull this all together. Thank you to Leanne um, for recording our music so that we could uh, rejoice and make a joyful noise to the Lord. Thank you to you for being here and, and participating in our worship. Uh, we look forward to uh, the weather easing up a little bit so that we can once again join in person for those who are comfortable with that. Uh, but for now, God bless you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.